Welcome to Art to Art about everything lupus, where we discuss everything about lupus. I'm Susie Eagles Flight from Lupus South Africa and Andrea's Gift Foundation. East is east and west is west and the wrong one I have chopped. Today we are talking about lupus and the importance of sleep. Hitting the hay, getting 40 wings and waiting for a visit from Mr. Sandman. However, you may modestly try to catch up on your sleep. It may still evade you if you are an individual with lupus. Why is the ability to fall into a deep slumber so difficult when you feel so exhausted? Stay tuned and I will explain. So, get a cup of nice hot coffee or tea. Put your earphones in, sit in a relaxing chair, and let the two of us discuss lupus. Lupus and the importance of sleep. Italian researchers have found that up to 80% of individuals with SLV in various studies reported sleep disturbances and poor sleep quality. There is not one lupus warrior that I have spoken to in my life, and I mean it's 19 years, and never have I found somebody that gets good night's sleep. Even if they are taking tablets, it's, it's a gamble. 51% of those individuals reported experiencing daytime sleepiness that's a fatigue of lupus. We all know that. 20 to 56 percent suffered from sleep apnea. 23 to 50 percent experienced periodic limp movement. Restless legs. In summary, sleep disorders occur in more than half of patients with SLE with a higher prevalence than the general population. In other words, if you have difficulty, Getting enough sleep, you're not alone. Additional research on sleep was conducted at a medical university in Bulgaria using the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index based on 12 item health survey and two lupus specific questionnaires. The index rates seven aspects. Of sleep. Number one, subjective sleep quality. For which patient rate their sleep on a scale of zero to three? Sleep latency, which is the time it takes to fall asleep after the lights are turned off. For me, at least an hour. Sleep duration, which varies naturally depending on factors like age but usually is expected to be seven to nine hours. Sleep efficiency, which is defined as a percentage of time asleep, usually measured in minutes, compared to the total time of a person in bed. A normal expectation should be at least 85%. Number five, sleep disturbances which can involve many aspects that create trouble sleep and waking up during sleep. For us, it could be muscle spasm, pain, um, you know, um, anxiety, depression, all those kinds of things. And number six, hot topic, use of sleep medication. Sleep medication is a hot topic because we get, you know, two different school of thought, people that don't like it and other people that do use it. But let, let me state my case because I've been doing this for 19 years. So, and um, I continuously carry on with research and I have come to a certain belief and you are welcome to differ from me. It's, it's all good, 
but uh, just listen to what I have to say. This is a very controversial subject. Your quality of life is very important in your lupus journey. Bad sleep patterns can directly impact your lupus and could cause a flare, which in turn is dangerous. Yes, if you use medications every day, it will become a habit. But remember, just like immunosuppressants have side effects, it helps you with your lupus. Just like that, you are taking a medication to help you sleep. It's got side effects, but your sleep is very important. If you take a sleep medication and never drink too much or crave more, you take it for years, it's not really an addiction. And you taper off at any time with your doctor's help. You even have to taper off prednisone and metotrexate too, and uh, antidepressants. And it's not so difficult to do. You just follow your doctor's instructions. Remember, it's about quality of life. Because you are chronically ill, not sleeping uh, drastically affects your daily life. Also, the right sleep medications are important. Some doctors prescribe the Z drugs like Zolpidem. That doesn't work um, for lupus patients because they keep on taking more and more because they can't fall asleep. So doctors started using drugs that antidepression, nerve meds, and anxiety disorder mix. But they have seen that it works for chronically ill people um, like tripline, trazodone, and even Cymbalta. And we have seen why it's way more effective in keeping you to sleep. For someone that has lupus, sleep is as important as being able to walk. So if you're struggling with sleep, please discuss the options with your doctor. You will see it will have a huge effect on your lupus and your fatigue if you can sleep at night. The last one of these seven things they use um, for the sleep study is daytime dysfunction. It refers to the lack of enthusiasm or difficulty staying awake for daily activities like eating, driving, or socializing. So now we have even these seven criteria. How would you rate yourself with these criteria? If you go back to them and say, oh yeah, I do struggle with daily dysfunction, I would think at about 80%, and then do all these sleep, um, all these subjects. The answers on that page that you have done it is going to give you an idea of how are your sleeping habits. The research result showed that over 84% of all participants studied with SLE had disturbed sleep. In particularly terms of sleep efficiency, and that this had a significant effect on the quality of life. If you find that poor sleep quality is significantly affecting your quality of life, you should check with your doctor for solutions like medications, natural or chemical, or being referred to do a sleep study. So I have recently started formally checking my sleep patterns. I um, used um, Samsung Health app on my phone. Um, everybody that is Samsung uh, gets it for free and I, I'm sure there's something like that on iPhone. And I've really gone into this sleep thing just for the purpose of this podcast that um, to, I say, basically give me an idea, you know, how my sleep patterns is. So here's the results that I got over a few nights after each other. One night I got 79%, but it was a night I was exhausted. And the time I started to sleep was in the morning hours. I had a fever. It was one night only 
So that is this, that statistic I cannot trust. But other sleep stats are usually around 50%, which is very bad for someone that is chronically ill. It's supposed to be higher than 50%. My deep sleep is under 20%, more or less viewing all of them, whereas it's supposed to be 25 and up. It looks like not much different, but it has a huge impact on your body. A weight 25% which should be a zero, actually. These differences does not sound like much, but for someone that has lupus, it can make a negative impact on your health and your fatigue might double because of the person. The French perfume that rocks the room and I'm all yours in buttons and bones. Now you will ask me, why is sleep so important? According to the National Institute of Health, healthy sleep has three vital roles. Healthy brain function and emotional well-being. The ability to sleep at night positively impacts your memory, creativity, and the, uh, the ability to problem solve, and your ability to effectively make wise decisions. Without proper sleep, you may experience erratic emotions and behaviors, an inability to cope with change, depression, engaging in risky behaviors, and even feeling suicidal. The second one is physical health. Sleep has been proven to repair your heart and blood vessel, lowering blood pressure and decreasing your risk for heart disease. So. And it's very important. Please remember, just a note here, please remember I'm doing a tips on the heart next month, so don't miss it. Daytimes, performance and safety. Getting adequate sleep makes you more productive and gives you more energy. Good quality sleep makes you better, more responsive, driver and enhances your ability to safely operate machinery. I mean that this speaks for itself. Um, it's very important because some of us still work and have jobs or even if you don't work and you have to look after your kids at home and do cleaning and cooking, you need the sleep because of this daytime performance safety. Now, what causes poor sleep in individuals with lupus? Many factors can influence your ability to get deep, restorative sleep if you have lupus. The key reasons for poor sleep include your emotional well-being. If you are feeling guilty, depressed, and anxious about your diagnosis, and a about not being able to do the things you used to, your emotional state can affect the way. Then medication, along with weight gain, steroids can rev up your system. I don't know if all the patients know that, but steroids can make you gain weight. It can make you angry. It can make you eat more. Um, so, yeah, but I found a little secret. If you take your steroids at night, take it the moment you go to bed because steroids don't kick in until hours after that. So by the time the steroids kick in, you're up in the morning and going and then you get some sleep because if you drink it with your pills at night after meal, you cannot sleep. If even some of us, even in the morning, we cannot sleep by taking steroids. So Make sure you take it the moment you go to sleep. Over overlapping diseases. Um, for example, leg, restless leg syndrome, sleep apnea, um, you know, with all these things can prevent a healthy sleep pattern. Next one, getting a better night's sleep. There are many things that you can do to improve your ability to experience a rehabilitative sleep that your body and mind 
desperately need. Number one, stay away from caffeine because caffeine has a lot of side effects, for example, keeping you awake. Next one, eliminate alcohol. Number three, don't go to bed hungry. It keeps you awake if you're hungry. Number four, exercise. It reduces stress, adrenaline, and excess energy that can stop you from having a good night's sleep. Number five, prepare your environment. This, uh, you know, all the years ago, I used to say, oh, no, this is simple. This is really not simple. This is not going to give me a good night's sleep. I must tell you, it works. I close the blind. The room is completely dark. Um, I put earphones in my ears. Um, it just helps me get to sleep, whether I put the tea on something simple or on worship songs or anything, or the, the calming water sounds on YouTube, all those things up. So this is what you do to prepare your environment. Cut down on your exposure to blue light. Phones, laptops, TVs, tablet gaming devices for at least 30 minutes before bed. I work in the night because it's your early morning so that I am at work. So I know if I finish working, I must lie down at least 30 minutes, not use my phone at all. Keep your room slightly cool and make sure to use comfortable bedding. Consider white noise in the background. It helps to reduce the distraction of things like traffic noises that keep you away. And it helps your brain not run with the simple things that keep you awake. As much as you love them, you may need to ban beds from your room as they can be a disturbance when you are trying to sustain a sleep. Our dog, Chappie, she has a little couch bed in our room. And, you know, she used to sleep in our room um, and then eventually moved out <laughs> to the living room. Um, I think Nico's snoring bothered her. So recently... Um, Nico moved her back into our room because <clears throat> she, um, if there's wind lightning, she gets scared. And just to make sure that she's in our room so I can give her a calming gravity. But she has this silly thing of she wants a blanket on when she goes to sleep. But then later on in the night, she doesn't want it anymore. So then she walks out until the blanket falls off her back. Then she would sit and watch everything around her and then she had gives this loud sigh like <sighs> you know and it wakes me up it wakes me up so Nico said you go back now she sleeps in the office underneath my desk and and she enjoys that doesn't want me to come near the room anymore but just to tell you a bit can bother you consider the 15 minute rule if you can't fall asleep within 50 minutes of going to bed, go into another room and relax until you feel sleepy. I must say, I don't do this, um, but I can think why it works. So I must say that um, it might be something that you want to put into practice. The next one is number six, manage stress and pain. Now, this is a very critical thing to do because sometimes, you know, you, you just stress and you have pain and pain tablets don't work and stuff like that. But journal if something is troubling you and get your thoughts, the kid, your thoughts out of your head onto paper. And remember, it's your book. You don't have to write nicely or whatever. But the moment I've seen it with activities, that I need to remind myself to. I wake up, I work, get, and I write it down, and then I fall asleep. And I have, don't worry about it anymore. And, it, and it's only because I put it on the paper. It works. Let me tell you out of experience, it works. Speak 
to your healthcare practitioner about ways to manage your pain, pain that specifically affects sleep. And in the meantime, consider taking a hot bath and put Epsom salt in because that helps with the pain too before bed and having your partner give you a massage to work the pain out. That works too. Nico and I have been doing that since I've been um, since I've been di- diagnosed, and really it works. I mean, it doesn't do that every night or every day, or but when and and Jade does all that too. You know, she does actually more than Nico does. But yeah, she um, she massages if there's a something a pain that I know massaging it will help and spe- muscle spasms. People just massage it with a bit of oil. It makes a huge difference. And number seven, stay on schedule. Try to go to bed and get up the same time each day. Need to take a nap? Plan them. Make sure you take them at the same time every day and limit them for no more than 60 minutes. To try to prevent taking naps after 5 p.m., the extra sleep may feel good at the time, but may prevent you from falling asleep when you need to later in the evening. So, yeah, I definitely stay on schedule. And if I'm ill, I don't. But I go to bed a certain time, which is later than other people do because I work in South Africa. So I will go to sleep 2, 3 maybe. But then I will wake wake up at 9, you know, or um, sometimes a bit later if I'm not doing well. But I do keep it the same. And my nap, everybody knows I take a nap um, between 3 and 5 p.m. I do because it works for me because I go to sleep late. You may want to take a nap earlier. And, you know, I have tried um, I've done this for a period of time and I then told one of my friends you know what try that and she said ah oh, no no and one day she tried it and she said it makes you use different on the fatigue and I said to her, yes I told you that you know it it helps it just helps and I'm all yours in, buttons and bones. in conclusion A lack of sleep becomes a vicious cycle. The more you need, the less that becomes available to you. By addressing your symptoms when they first occur and speaking to a trusted doctor, you can learn to take control of this integral part of your health and well-being. Going to bed should eventually feel more like a blessing not like a curse. And I'm telling you, sometimes it does feel like a, a, a curse. And French perfume that rocks the room And I'm all yours in buttons and bows Okay, this concludes this podcast. This concludes this podcast. Please review it on the platform you are listening on. Leave a comment below on the topics you would like us to talk about. If you enjoyed this podcast, please hit the like button below. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram and TikTok and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Andrew's Gift, Andrew Gift, Gift, Twins and Teens, Lupus South Africa and Susie Eagles Flight. Thank you for listening and remember, giving up is not an option. Bye.